So we are currently at the Master Tech Expo and my friends, I've found a fabrication build that I wanna show you guys and I wanna take a closer look. This build has some really cool features that I find very unique, some incredible fabrication, and I really wanted to know the whole story behind it. So let's talk to one of these guys from JL Audio and take a closer look. All right guys, so right now I am joined by Matt from JL Audio. Matt, real quick, what's your position here? Hey Mark, hi everybody, glad you're here. Um, my name is Matt Mergenthal. I was a formerly research and development technician at JL Audio. Currently, I'm the technical and applications trainer. So you're the man to talk to right here on this build. My understanding is you were pretty heavily involved in this, correct? Yes, absolutely. I was um, on the team of builders. It was done in our research and development department in Miramar, Florida, in the headquarters. Um, the team consisted of uh, Bill Hamsey, Gary Martin, Mike West, Sean Malins, Donovan Stennett, and myself. That's quite the team. So Matt, first of all, give us a rundown. What gear is actually in this build? The design intent of this build was to show off our flagship products, our seven level products. So C7s, W7s, and VXI. And something to know about our seven level product. If it's a seven, you know it's something special. Um, so what we have is we have a C7 active three-way setup in the front stage. Okay. It's all in factory locations. Um, so that's your, your tweeter and then your three and a half inch mid-range and then the six and a half inch woofer. That is correct. Yep. Um, we have four VXI amplifiers powering the speakers. So there's a uh, 606, two 600 ones that power the subs and a 602 that powers the mid bass. Okay, you gotta have that extra power on the mid bass. So yeah. then my understanding, we talked about this a little bit before, so you have that six channel over on this side here. That's going to be your two front tweeters, your two front mid-range, but then also some of your rear, your two rear speakers. As Correct. Well. We have a set of C2 350 uh, X coaxial three and a half inch drivers in the surround rear pillars. And that's just used for a little bit of uh, rear fill that can help to widen the stage. So you also mentioned that you have the two BX600 slash one eyes in the middle there, so one on each subwoofer, correct? That's correct. And tell me a little bit more about these subs. What size are they? You, you know, you mentioned they're the W7s. Yep, we have two 10-inch W7 anniversary edition woofers. Yep. Um, they're our flagship product, and we wanted something special in this car, really, to show off what W7s can do. So the box was designed with three-quarter three quarter inch fiberglass, um, so it's a little overkill, but what we know is it's not gonna flex. Right. We're gonna get the best base response out of this enclosure. Right, and obviously, you know, you guys build your own line of prefabricated enclosures. You have a line of stealth box enclosures as well that are all made out of the fiberglass. So you guys know what matters when it comes to really making those enclosures strong. Uh, let, you know, let's talk more about the fabrication side of this. You know, first of all, the one thing that immediately I noticed is, you know, there's so much uh, of this silver looking material. Can you tell us like, is that just like a wrapped film or w what is actually Absolutely. going on Absolutely, so what you're seeing is over 30 pieces of billet machined aluminum that was made in house in our machine shop in Florida. We have a great team of guys, Russ Barfield and his team. Um, they, they spent a lot of hours creating these parts and uh, after that we had them finished and anodized. Yeah. And uh, it's all composite materials, it's leather, um, there's some uh, composite material that's like a fiber board okay. that uh, is part of the enclosure as well as some of the trim pieces. Um, we tried to keep it classy and minimalistic yeah. um, while also showing off something that kind of represents JL Audio. A couple of the design elements that I really like down here at the bottom, if you look at these pieces, I know that you know this OEM piece here Originally in the vehicle, this particular part, it kind of looks like that, but you guys decided you wanted everything to match. So you completely machined this out of billet aluminum as well, <laughs> added that in there. So, I mean, you guys went all out. You wanted to make sure everything matched perfectly. I also love this like cascading light effect that you guys have going on here. You know, the detail you added in here with the JL Audio logo, all that machine work is, you know, you could have easily just kept that kind of like a flat or rounded plane, but that extra added detail kind of carries throughout and matches. You know, I notice a lot of these, these three lines everywhere. We've got three here, three here, three here. And then I gotta make sure I get a nice close up for everyone at home, you know, the combination of kind of the Cadillac logo there with the W7, yep. well done. That was, a, that was a Bill Hamsey special right there. He, he created that and we're really happy with the outcome. Awesome, yeah, it looks, it looks super good. All right guys, so you have to see this. This amp rack really sets it off. What I can actually do here, so you know, you explained Matt earlier that there's the four amplifiers in there and what these guys have done is they've added a little switch over here on this side that we can turn on, if I can find it here, and check this out. The amplifiers are actually going to retract back underneath the subwoofer enclosure, 
And Matt, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday. Can you tell us why you guys decided to do that? Gary Martin, he's um, he's one of the guys in R and D, and he's got a very you know good mechanical brain. He was the brains behind the mini and the sliding amp rack there. So in this one, um, we decided we wanted a, a space to be able to put something back here if we wanted to move the car and you know maybe bags or, or a travel bag. But we also wanted to protect the amplifiers. So when you move the amp rack into the uh, forward position, the amplifiers are completely covered and nothing can fall or, or drop on them. Yeah, so the other thing that I noticed right away is you know you have a really, really nice clean fiberglass layup going on on the inside there to kind of match the factory contours of the vehicle. And you told me that the team, when you guys designed and fabricated all of this, you made it so that you can literally return the vehicle back to factory if you need to. Right, yeah, the idea was to make a tub that we could actually build on the bench. Yeah. And then when we were done building it, we could go place it in the car and attach everything to the, the, the tub and the frame system that's in there. And everything is bolted to the tub. So if we were to remove the tub, the factory spare tire can go back in and all the factory parts. So Matt, obviously all the VXI amplifiers have that digital signal processor integrated. So you had to tune them. Give me some, uh, some insight. How did you actually tune the Cadillac? So the Cadillac was tuned using Tune 4 with Max. We have two, two, two presets in the Cadillac, a driver and a passenger. The microphone, our mic array here, was set in the driver's seat. And we went through uh, Tune 4 and Max. We measured the impulse response, the frequency response, and phase aligned all the speakers in the system to get a really good sound quality system based on our targets that we chose. So Tune 4 is the name of your guys' software. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? So uh, Mark, Tune 4 is our software that's available online, www.jlaudio.com. Uh, it brings in a whole new feature set to Tune software. We now have the measure tab, which brings in the capability of the target generator, which is really cool because you can do a lot with the independent passband specific, specific targets. You also get the signal generator functions. You get access to a single mic RTA and spectrograph measurements for free. So like you mentioned, you added the measure tab with Tune 4. I got to say up front, you know, I really like the software, you know, the older versions of Tune and what you've brought it to. I like in the older versions how you could, you know, draw the line to connect your different signal paths. To me, it's like really intuitive and easy to understand, easy to set up. And now, obviously, you retain that functionality, but you've added the measure tab as well. So now another new product for you guys is the fact that you've added what you guys call the Max. And that kind of integrates as part of the measure tab. Can you tell me more about that? Absolutely. So the Max brings a whole list of different features, but that's not required to access the measure tab. In the measure tab, you can still do the auto set EQ. Uh, with VXI amplifiers and tweak and MVI amplifiers, it is seamless. They work together. Tune 4 and, and, and VXI were designed for each other. They work really, really well together. You can still use other products with Tune 4 and measurements and using the passband targets, but it's not required to have Max or VXI to use Tune 4 measure tab. Max brings a whole new list of features to the measure tab on Tune 4. You can do live impulse response measurements as well as phase and magnitude measurements. Uh, this is a very big deal because you can measure time domain information that previously wasn't able to be measured in the car audio world. Um, we can look at real-time phase traces. Um, we can see through the reflections in the vehicle to correct the alignment of drivers uh, in the car. And Matt, I know it's hard because there's obviously so much functionality here. There's a lot that, you know, we're trying to keep this video quick. There's a lot more detail to go into. And trust me, guys, JL Audio was cool enough to actually hook me up with one of the Max measurement devices. So you can expect some content coming on that in the future. We'll definitely be able to dive more into detail because I know you guys want to learn all about this. Matt, so obviously we're here at the Master Tech Expo, which is focused on fabrication and builds. So you guys have a couple of other builds here at the event. And actually what's super cool, what you guys are telling me about this is, you know, these couple of cars here, these are employee owned, JL Audio employees own these vehicles. So, you know, they of course love rocking the JL Audio gear and these are locally built by some of the local shops here in Phoenix. Yeah, our JL guys are very passionate uh, about the products that we make and they get to build them and you know put their hands on them and they love to put the end result in their car and yeah. we like to support our local dealers whenever possible and send them to work. So tell me about this car that we have here first. So this car is in fact C7 three-way active speaker. So it's a C7 one-inch tweeter 
the C7 three and a half inch mid range and the C7 six and a half inch mid bass. Yep. Um, it has two VXI amplifiers, the 800 slash eight and a 1000 slash one that powers a single 10 W7 in the rear of the, the vehicle. Yeah, and I, I love to see on this particular build here, you know, the use of LED lighting. You have that nice JL Audio logo in the center there. And what I like about this one here is they've used one of the mobile solutions templates. It's actually the Challenger template. So definitely recognize that shape. It looks really nice and clean, so well done. And let's go and talk about this other one over here. Over here, we have a Mustang. I see four amplifiers. I see two subwoofers. I think this thing definitely gets down. What, what all do we have going on? So this is also a C7 three-way system. Um, same thing, it's got the tweeters and the pillars. This one has the mid-range speaker in the door location and the mid-base in the lower portion of the door. Uh, it does house two 10W6V3s in the subwoofer enclosure. And what's cool about this one is it's actually got a surface that reflects all that energy straight up through a hole in the rear deck. So the trunk can be wide open so you can see the amps and still get great bass in the cabin without any loss in the trunk. Awesome, yeah, that's a good design they've got there. Nice, thick acrylic, you know, angled, like you said, so you can reflect that bass up into the cabin. And the other thing that I really like is, you know, they made sure that they did a really good job of trimming out that hole in the rear deck so that it looks nice and complete. So, Absolutely. hey, another two great builds here at the booth. So there we have it, guys, some of the latest products from JL Audio. I love seeing all these different custom fabrication builds. There's a ton more to see here at the Expo event, so I'm gonna go check that out. If you guys haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out my full overview video about this event. You guys can learn more all about this event at the links down below. And also, a special thanks to JL Audio for being a monthly channel sponsor. If you guys wanna learn more about them, check out those links down in the video description. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching.